It had been a particularly rough day at work for Rex Harrison. Nothing had gone right for him. He was feeling pretty miserable and couldn't wait to get home. He usually walked home through the park. He liked the feeling of being in nature. But tonight, he just wanted to get home as quickly as possible. So he took the shortcut which led through an abandoned neighborhood close to his office. As he walked along the pavement, he felt his mood getting worse. He didn't notice the old dilapidated ice cream van until he was right beside it. He probably wouldn't have noticed it at all if it wasn't for the strange sound he heard. It almost sounded like a growl. He stopped and looked at the van. He hadn't imagined it. There was definitely a growling noise coming from it. Rex smiled. He thought he must really be going crazy if he thought a van could make noises. He listened again. It was silent. He laughed to himself. It was probably just the wind blowing. Rex looked inside the van, but he couldn't see anyone working there. That's a shame, he said. I would love to have a strawberry ice cream right now. As soon as he said the words, a slot opened up in the middle of the driver's door and a strawberry ice cream came out. Rex looked at it in surprise. Who had served up the ice cream, he wondered. I'm sorry, I don't have any money on me, said Rex. Suddenly, a siren started wailing. Its piercing sound was painful and Rex put both his hands on his ears to try to drown out the noise. The siren just went on and on, getting louder and louder. Seconds later, Rex felt something wet on his hands. When he looked to see what it was, his heart went cold. His hands were covered in blood. Welcome back to SCP Exposed. Today we bring you the Euclid class subject SCP-1386. But before I go on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to make sure you won't miss out on any more SCP stories. SCP-1386 is a white, good humor brand ice cream truck in poor condition and lacking any images or descriptions of the products it sells. The van appears to be sapient as it drives without a person behind the wheel. After the investigation of March 15, 2012, it has been concluded that none of the doors or windows on the vehicle open through conventional means. The van plays instrumental melodies of Pop Goes the Weasel and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star 24 hours a day, alternating between the two every four hours. On occasion, it has been known to play a version of Greensleeves, but will immediately switch to another song when in the presence of customers. SCP-1386 has a thin slot in the middle of its driver's side door, which only becomes visible when it dispenses the various ice cream products it sells. Along with the ice cream, the van slides out a small slip of receipt paper with a price written on it in what has been described as very sloppy but legible handwriting. The van receives payment through the same slot it delivers ice cream from and will drive away as soon as it is paid. The prices and flavors of the ice cream products it sells fluctuate daily but it never runs out of its stock of items. SCP-1386 is currently located in an evacuated four-block neighborhood surrounded by a 10-meter high reinforced concrete containment wall in Spain, approximately eight kilometers from the nearest inhabited neighborhood. Due to the incident with one of the Foundation personnel on the 17th of April, 2012, it is to be kept under constant surveillance and must only be approached by D-class personnel. Any individual that comes within a 3 meter radius of SCP-1386 must give the appearance of being happy, such as by smiling or laughing. If it is approached by someone who does not appear happy, the subject will feign hostility, emitting a low growl from its interior, and refuse to interact positively until the individual's demeanor changes. It is as of yet unknown if it will act out on its aggression if exacerbated. When making contact with SCP-1386, it is strongly advised to have at least $20 of American currency in hand and in plain view of it. If it does not sense currency on the individual approaching it, a siren that has been known to cause bleeding of the inner ear will blare from its undercarriage for the next 24 hours. All attempts to silence the siren have failed, and once it has begun, the subject will refuse to move from its current location until the 24-hour period has passed. Any attempts of interaction with SCP-1386 during this period have been known to momentarily increase the intensity of the siren. Various tests on the van have been conducted by Foundation personnel. On the 30th of March, 2012, Dr. Rogers and Davies each requested one cookies and cream smoothie, and they were dispensed as asked. However, one smoothie was marked with a handwritten M and the other a handwritten G. The receipt was for $4.89 and was paid without incident. Two days later, on April 1st, Dr. Davies requested one Neapolitan ice cream sandwich. After several seconds, the van slid out what appeared to be a meat and cheese sandwich with tomato. 
The sandwich was made out of chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry ice cream, respectively. The receipt given read April Fools, and the van drove away before Dr. Davies could inquire about payment. Approximately 10 days later, Dr. Davies asked for a single scoop vanilla ice cream in a waffle cone. The product was dispensed as asked, with a receipt that read 72 cents and was paid without incident. On the 17th of April, Dr. Fleming was assigned to conduct a test with SCP-1386. He requested one peach push pop and received it, along with a receipt of $16.27. Dr. Fleming expressed disapproval at the price for the ice cream and refused to pay the full amount, instead paying a total of $3.75 in quarters. However, when the doctor attempted to walk away, the van opened the slot in its door to an approximate height of six feet and dragged him inside of it by use of a large and rusted steel trap. The van then returned its slot to its former size and proceeded to spew out a pink substance from its slot for five straight minutes before then driving away with no further incident. Upon inspection of the pink substance, it was found to consist of blood, skin tissue, and bone fragments whose DNA signature matched that of Dr. Fleming. Following this incident, the Foundation decided that all further attempts to interact with SCP-1386 must be through D-Class personnel only. The first test was conducted by personnel D-735. He asked the van for a cherry popsicle, adding, with nuts. The van seemed to wait several seconds, then dispensed a single cherry popsicle, unwrapped with nuts embedded in the ice. The receipt given read, $2.20, your nuts and D-735 was recorded as chuckling as he read the paper. The van was paid without incident. Three days later, he requested a Caesar salad flavor popsicle. After a few moments, the van dispensed a popsicle with an off-green coloration, which was noted to taste of lightly dressed lettuce with a hint of croutons. The receipt was for $4.56 and was paid without incident. Personnel D-278 asked for a dark chocolate fudge pop and received it with a receipt of $1.38 paid for it with two single dollar bills. After receiving payment, the van made a sound akin to a cash register from within what is presumably the area in which ice cream is stored, and then dispensed a small factory wrapped package. There was no written indication of what was contained inside the package, but on the front there was a crudely drawn image of what appeared to be various coins, all of American currency. The van drove off once the package was dispensed. At the urging of Dr. Jenkins, D-278 was then assigned to inspect the contents of the package. The package was found to have a total of 62 cents in American currency. When the coins were considered safe, D-278 asked if he could keep the change. The request was denied. Following a number of tests, the Foundation decided to change course. A new procedure was introduced. Personnel D-27, who was mute but able to write, requested a vanilla cone in chocolate through use of pencil and paper. The request was raised to the area where the dispensing slot usually appears. After a full minute, the van opened another slot three inches lower than the normal one. A thin, flesh-colored appendage slid out of the slot to retrieve the paper before retreating and closing the slot. Moments later, the normal slot opened and the ice cream was received. The receipt was for 97 cents and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction, D-27 responded in frantic sign language. It is transcribed as follows. It was a hand, not human. It had two fingers and a thumb. It was bony like a dead body and it smelled like it was dead. D-27 refused to eat the ice cream he had received, claiming that he had lost his appetite. Following the events with D-27, personnel D-15, who is not mute, was given the order to repeat the same test, writing the request on paper and giving it to the van. The van received the paper through its secondary slot by use of another flesh-colored appendage and completed the transaction as requested. The receipt was for 86 cents and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction and the appendage in particular, D-15 responded, I don't see what Brian was getting all worked up about. It's just a hand, you know? There's probably just some guy in there handing out ice cream. Sure, it's weird, but what here isn't? Personnel D-112, also not mute, was given the order to write a new request on paper and give it to the van. The request was for a banana sundae with hot fudge. As in previous tests, the van accepted the paper through a secondary slot by use of its hand and processed the request. The receipt was for $2.78 and was paid without incident. When questioned about the transaction, D-112 stated, There's got to be somebody in there. I could swear I heard somebody cough, like they had a cold or something. When he was pushed further on the topic of the hand, he responded, 
Look, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a hand. It's got all five fingers and looked healthy. Certainly not dead or whatever. Brian's just lost it. Never trusted that guy much anyway. On the 6th of December, personnel D-27 was found dead in his holding block at 7.40. The approximate time of death was 4.30. The autopsy shows that D-27 died of strangulation, and light bruising on the neck confirms this. His death has been marked as suicide as he did not share a cell with any other personnel and his cell door showed no signs of forced entry. What do you think of that SCP case? Please leave your comments below.